So my dear brothers and sisters, today we are going to reflect about a passage, an important point that we all need to know. Let us first read Isaiah 48 verse 17 onwards. This is the first reading of today. So let's read Isaiah 48 verse 17 onwards. Then word of God says, Thus says the Lord, you are Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to uh, teaches you for your own good, who leads you in the way you should go. Praise the Lord. The Lord has selected Israel and the Lord is leading them, showing them path, what to do, where to go, how to go. Every detail is given to them. Though they are intelligent, powerful, strong, in every sense they are very good, but still they depended on always they depended on God. So today I would like to speak to you. Whom does God select to use for mighty things? Whom does God select to use to, for mighty things? If you read the Bible, you will be shocked. Unlike all the other books in the world, this is special because here the superstars are the the zeros of the world are the heroes in the Bible. In front of the whole world, they were zeros and nothing. But God made them all heroes because they trusted God. They depended on God. I am the Lord your God who teaches you. He teaches them and for their own good, who leads them the way you should go. Praise the Lord. If you check every one or or, or one by one, every incident from the Bible, you will come to know this. God selected as the first Pope, God selected a fisherman who was uh, illiterate, not so intelligent as the world thinks, and is not so diplomat because whatever that is there in his mind, he, that comes out immediately. He doesn't think twice. He thinks twice only later. But God has chosen him. He also made lots of mistakes. He failed. He denied Jesus. And he is also one of those people who ran away from Jesus. But still, God used him. And if you look into all the other disciples, all of them, they all of them were fishermen, tax collectors, the worst people. Tax collectors were hated by everyone. And God selected them. And all zealots, they were criminals according to the law of Roma. They were criminals, but God selected them. Praise the Lord. So God always chooses the lowly ones. If you look into the Mother Mary's life, Mother Mary, ordinary girl. If you know the history of Mother Mary's, you know the background of Mother Mary from the apocryphal books, we know Mother Mary was... A, a, a child for Joachim and Anna in their old age. And after when she was almost around three, or three years old, she was surrendered, offered in the temple. And she was brought up in the temple. Meanwhile, Joachim and Anna died. And she was brought up as an orphan, according to the tradition. Mother Mary, ordinary girl, no family of her own. Everyone died an orphan brought up and God has chosen this girl to be the mother of the Messiah so all those who feel that you are good for nothing you are useless you are incapable then there is a big potentiality for you to be the next hero the only thing that you need to do is trust in the Lord I have noticed everyone who is so innocent who is so weak, who is so feel that they are incapable without the help of someone, they are the ones easily taken control by the evil one because it is very easy for evil to direct them and guide them. But today, the word of God says, if you think you are good for nothing, you are useless, you are incapable, then the next thing that you need to do is Total dependence on God. 
then you will see the wonders total dependence on god total surrender to the lord that is why in today's gospel is the bible says isaiah 48 17 thus says to the lord your redeemer the holy one of israel i am the lord your god who teaches you for your own good who leads you in the way you should go praise the lord he leads you the way he you should take you know sometimes you feel you are not able to make a decision for yourself if you are not able to make a decision for yourself well and good you don't need to make because god says i will lead you i will show you path i will direct you i will show you the right way to take you will see and you just need to obey me you just need to obey me praise the lord uh, hallelujah so this is very important i'll give you some examples from the bible praise the lord we know uh, there is an incident from judges book of judges chapter 7 verse 1 onwards okay the book of judges chapter 7 verse 1 onwards let us read judges 7 1 7 1 onwards chapter 7 verse 1 onwards we read like this judges 7 1 onwards we read then jerubal that is gideon all the troops that were with him rose early and encamped beside the spring of harod and the camp of midian was north of them below the hill of more in the valley so jerubal the gideon was the chosen one he wanted to go against the enemy nations, the Midianites. They were waiting for them. They are camped against the Israelites. And Gideon is the leader of Israelites because the Israelites ne never had a very good leader those days. And this Gideon, who is this Gideon? If you want to know who is this Gideon, what is his capacity? And then if you want to know who is this Gideon, and what is his capacity how strong he is how capable he is we need to read judges chapter 6 verse 11 judges chapter 6 verse 11 we read like this now the angel of the lord came and sat under the oak at ophrah which belonged to josh the abiezrite as his son gideon was beating out wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. Those days Israelites were so afraid of Midianites. And this Gideon. The future leader. He was so afraid of the Midianites. He had some wheat. Which he wanted to beat. So he can't do it publicly. If he does it publicly. The Midianites will come and take it away. So there was a useless wine press. Inside the wine, wine press. He was beating the wheat secretly so that the Midianites should not see them, see him. You can see how frightened he is, how incapable he is, how useless he is. He is only worried about his work and he is hiding his work and he doesn't want the Midianites to see this. And secretly, poor man, he is secretly beating the wheat and trying to get something for his food. And then suddenly... An angel of the Lord came. Let us read verse 12. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. This is contradicting. This Gideon is an ordinary man. He is so afraid and secretly beating the wheat inside the wine press. Wine press is used for wine. But he is not doing anything connected to wine. He is doing, he uh, he's beating the wheat and he's doing it hidingly, secretly, because he's afraid. But what did angel say? Angel looked at him, looking at these fearful men, useless men, good for nothing fellow. Looking at him, angel said, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. My dear brothers and sisters, God calls you not based on what you are, how, who you are, what capacity you have. That is not the basis for God to select you. God looks forward. God is thinking of you, what he can make out of you. 
Praise the Lord. He has a plan for your future. You, he doesn't look at you based on your past and present, but he is looking at you based on your future. And looking at his future, he said, you are a mighty warrior. And then Gideon was looking at, at himself, a dirty dress and no proper shoes and not even the trousers properly and, and his muscles, no muscles, no six pack, only family pack. And with all this capacity, he is standing there helpless and frightened to make sure that the Midianites doesn't see him. And the angel of God appears to him and say, you mighty warrior. My dear brothers and sisters, God looks at your future and calls you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be hesitant. Don't be afraid. Just get up and believe that you are a mighty warrior. Don't argue with God saying, God, I think you have made a mistake. You are supposed to go somewhere else. You are made a mis you are you are wrong. You have come to I am Gideon and I, I'm only an ordinary man. I'm not a warrior. I'm not a soldier. I never trained. I never went to the army. I never got any training in the past. So I think you made a mistake. You are wrong. He could have argued with God saying you are wrong, but he just kept quiet. My dear brothers and sisters, when God selects you. You may look at you and your past and, and every your capacity, your present and past and say, I am useless, Lord, don't select me. Why are you calling me? What is your plan for me? What are you thinking about me? Don't, the Lord says, don't worry about you. Don't worry about your past, present. I know your future. My dear brothers and sisters, we all have a plan, for, plan about God. We have an idea about God. Oh, God should be like this. Whenever we are in need of some food, God should bring some biryani. And whenever we want to go for a journey, and God should provide us some car or something. And when we need a uh, marriage, we, God should bring the girl a friend or boyfriend. And when we have something, we have our own plans about God. But God says, but I have a plan for you. I have a plan for you. This is the big contradiction, conflict that is going on inside of us. We have a plan. God has a plan. But unfortunately, our plans are so limited. Chicken biryani or maybe a car or maybe some, uh, uh, some chocolate, maybe a small girlfriend or maybe a boyfriend. These are the, our plans. But God is planning something high. Mighty warrior. He never imagined a Gideon who is sitting in the, uh, hiding in the wine press and pre beating the wheat. He never imagined he is going to be the leader of Israel to lead a battle against a mighty army like Midianites. He is hiding in a wine press and beating the wheat just because he was afraid of one or two Midianites. He is not afraid of the whole army of Midianites, but he is afraid of one or two Midianites in case if they come and attack him and take away all his possessions. Therefore, he is doing it hidingly, secretly. But if you see what did God do with this Gideon, then you will be shocked. That is what we are going to read. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise to Jesus. Then let us read, continue, verse, chapter 6, verse 12. The Lord, angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. Verse 12, 13. Gideon answered him, But sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? See, this is one question many people ask just like Gideon. If God is with us, you said God is with you, you are a mighty warrior. But look at me. If God is with me, how can I be like this? I am useless. Good for nothing. I'm hiding here and secretly pressing the beating the wheat so that no one should come and attack me. Where is this God? If God is with me, where is he? Where are all his wonderful deeds that our ancestors recounted to us saying, did not continue. Did not the uh, he recounted saying, did not the okay, verse 14, verse 14, verse 13. 
Gideon answered, But sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our ancestors recounted us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has cast us off and given us un into the hand of Midianites. Then the Lord turned, verse 14, Then the Lord, Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian I hereby commission you praise the Lord and God said go in this might of yours and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian he has got a zeal he is questioning God where are you where were you we believe in the old history and we have heard in the past you have protected us but now where are you then God says go now you have some zeal inside. Though outside no pack, nothing. But inside you have some six pack. Now with this might inside of you, go and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. I hereby command you, commission you. God is commissioning him. This is what happened to this Gideon. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Then continue. Verse 15. Then what did he say? Then he said, he responded, but sir, how can I deliver Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family. My dear brothers and sisters, always God selects like these. The weakest, useless, good for nothing. If anybody thinks that you are like this, remember, you have a big potentiality. God is choosing you. God is selecting you. For example, there is another passage which speaks very clearly about this. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. From the book of Samuel. Let us read from the first Samuel. First Samuel, we read like this. There is a beautiful passage from first Samuel. And when Samuel wanted to select Saul as the king, Saul as the first king. We read 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 21. 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 21. We read like this. When Saul was supposed to be selected as the new king, the first king. Uh, you know the prophet said, Saul, you are going to be selected. Then Saul answered, I am only a Benjaminite. From the least of the tribes of Israel. My family is the humblest of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin. Why then have you spoken to me in, in this way? See, Saul is coming from a useless, good for nothing, humblest, weakest family. His family history is not so good. His background is not so good. His capacity is not so good. But God has chosen him to be the first king. Again, Judges chapter 6 verse 15 Judges chapter 6 verse 15 we read the Gideon also says the same thing Gideon said he said I am the useless one chapter 6 verse 15 he responded Judges so judge chapter 6 verse 15 he responded but sir how can I deliver Israel my clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family then verse 16 verse 16 says the Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike down the Midianites, every one of them. Praise the Lord. He said, Don't worry, I will be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, if anybody thinks you are good for nothing, you are useless, you are helpless, and you can't do anything, you are, you are incapable of uh, uh, you know, taking any initiative, the Lord wants to tell you, if anyone say, how is it possible? How can I do this? The Lord wants to say, I will be with you. Praise the Lord. I will be with you. Mother Mary said, how is it possible? How can it be? Then the Lord said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Anyone who feels you cannot, then you are the right person to be chosen by God. Anyone who feels that you are incapable, then you are the right one to be chosen by God. Only thing you need to do, trust in God. And he says, I will be with you. 
Anyone who always feel that I am good for nothing, I am useless, I can't do, then remember one person is with you right now. That is our Lord. Because He wants to be with those people who feel that they are nothing. Those who feel I, I can do everything, I am able, I am capable, I am intelligent, I am brilliant. Those who think so, they don't need God. And God need not be with them unless they also admit that even though I have, I need God. Praise the Lord. Let us read Judges chapter 7 verse 1. Judges 7 1. What did this Gideon do after when he was chosen? Then Jerubal, the Gideon and all the troops that were with him rose early and encamped beside the spring of Herod. And the camp of Midian was north of them below the hill of Moreh in the valley was too. The Lord said to Gideon, The troops with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand. Israel would only take the credit away from me, saying, My own hand is, has delivered me. My dear brothers and sisters, there is a huge army, more than 120,000 Midianites, Midianites who are standing outside the camp, outside the Israelites' camp. Now, Gideon is choosing army for himself. He is selecting some army. You know how many people he selected? He selected almost uh, 32,000 32, people from Israel as his army. How many are there in the enemy? 120,000. More than 120,000. Here he has 32,000. With these 32,000 Gideon is standing in front of all these 32,000 and God came. And Gideon was looking at God and said, God, this is the maximum I could collect. This is the maximum I could collect, 32,000. But they are 120,000 and more, four times as much. So what shall I do? Then God said, the troops with you are too many for me. 32,000 is too much. These troop with you are too many for me to give the Midianites. If you with these 32,000 go and fight against Midianites and if you defeat them and come out, come out, then you will say it's all because we are so 32,000 people are there. We were a good army and we are so powerful. We all were so courageous. That's why we could become out victorious. Then the Lord said, you are too many. I don't want this big army. If you are big, then you will take all credit. You will never acknowledge that I am the one who is in charge. My dear brothers and sisters, that is why all those who are strong, all those who are courageous, powerful, all these people may not be accepted by God to be chosen for some kind of mission. Because if they are chosen, nobody will acknowledge God. They will only get the credit. Only these people will get the credit. And they will be honored. They will be exalted. Not God. But God is in charge. God is the one who is winning all the wars and all the battle. Therefore all the credit and acknowledgement should go to God. Therefore God said, I don't want these 32,000 people. Then continue verse 3. Verse 3 says, the word of God. Now therefore proclaim this in the hearing of the troops. Whoever is fearful. See 32,000 are there. And God said tell them. If anybody is afraid. Let them go back home. Thus Gideon sifted them out. So Gideon came and told the people. All the soldiers. They were all standing with power and might. With all the weapons. Gideon said if anybody among you is frightened. You can go back home. Immediately 22,000 people left. And only 10,000 remaining. That means all these 32,000, the way they were standing as if they were going to devour the whole world. But when they were asked to go, they ran away immediately. They were all standing with fear. They had no choice but they were just standing. Because the others are standing. Not because they are courageous but because they think the others are courageous. But one by one, when they started going, everybody went. Only 10,000 remained. 
Then what did God say? Then Gideon said, that, "Okay, at least these ten thousand God will be uh, will be choosing. God will be happy with this." Verse four. Continue reading. Then the Lord said to Gideon, "The troops are still too many. Even ten thousand is too much for me." My dear brothers and sisters, this is how God works. He doesn't need. He only needs a useless fellow. He just needs somebody to say yes, Lord. That's all. He doesn't look at his muscles. He doesn't look at his height. He doesn't look at his uh, literacy. He doesn't look at his capacity. He just needs somebody who say yes. Mother Mary said yes. Saul said yes. Gideon said yes. Everybody who say yes, God needs them. Those who say no, 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 God will say no. Praise the Lord. Then the Lord said to Gideon, "The troops are still too many. Take them down to the water. I will sift them out for you there. When I say this one shall go with you, he shall go with you. And when I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So I am going to select out of these ten thousand. I am going to select. Then verse five, we read like this. Verse five. So he brought the troops down to the water." And the Lord said to Gideon, "All those who lap the water with their tongues, as a dog laps, you shall put to one side. So let them drink water from the river. But those who drink water like the dogs drink, you know how you dogs drink. Dogs drink. If you don't know how the dogs drink, get one." Uh, some bucket full of water and put it in front of the dog, and you will come to know how the dog drinks the water. So God said, "All those who lap the water with their tongues, as a dog laps, you shall put to one side. All those who drink like a dog, keep them one side. And those who drink in a decent way, decent parties, those who kneel down to continue uh, to drink." putting their hands to their mouths you shall put to the other side so two types of people one the dog like people the other one decent like people so keep them uh, to both sides then out of these 10000 people let us see the result continue the number of those that lapped was 300 those who were drinking like the dog they were 300 people but all the rest Out of ten thousand, three hundred were uh, uh, the people who were drinking like the dogs, and rest how many you calculate? So they were kept at the other side, nine thousand seven hundred, and they were kept aside. And these dog-like people were selected. God said, "These are the best for me because in front of all of you, they were the foolish, good for nothing fellows." they don't know how to drink water properly as human beings they want to drink like dogs so these are the chosen ones my dear brothers and sisters people will be shocked i don't know whether gideon became unconscious because there is a possibility he is the leader who is going to lead these 300 people good for nothing they they drink even for drinking water they are drinking like dogs and now god said I am selecting them. Verse seven. Continue reading. Then the Lord said to Gideon, "With the three hundred that lapped, I will deliver you, and I give the Midianites into your hand. Let all the others go to their homes. Let everybody go back home. All the powerful, mighty warriors, all those with the muscles, power, and height, and strength, with all the weapons in their hand, let them go back home. I will take these people who drink like dogs." And God took these three hundred. Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. And you know who is the leader? Gideon is the leader. And what must be the feeling of Gideon? And I'm sure he must be the most terrified person among these people. But since he is the leader, he cannot go home. And he was not given option to go home. That's why he's there. How do we know whether he was afraid or not? Continue reading, verse eight. So he took the jars of the troops from their hands and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel back to their own tents, but retained the three hundred 
the camp of midian was below him in the valley okay verse 9 that same night the lord said to him gideon get up attack the camp for i have given it into your hand gideon go and attack the camp i have given them into your hand verse 10 but if you fear to attack if there is fear in you do one thing i will give you a helper who is that your servant pura so he was but if you fear to attack go down to the camp with your servant a servant was given my dear brothers and sisters god said okay now it's time for you to go and attack but if you are afraid inside take the servant with you and you know the way god is telling him god is telling the leader to go against an army a huge army and he has only 300 people to support him and now god says now i'm giving you the army go and fight if you are afraid take one servant not even a soldier not even a soldier not even a mighty warrior not a big army not nothing he said take one servant with you as if he's going to fetch some water he's going to attack an enemy a huge army but god says take one servant with you and the next one verse 11 and you shall hear what they say and afterwards your hands shall be strengthened to attack the camp so you have to listen to your servant because you are afraid since you are having fear inside if you have fear inside listen to your servant then he went down with his servant what does it mean he he took the servant what does it mean he is afraid god said you go and attack if you are afraid take the servant he took the servant that means he is afraid my dear brothers and sisters and easily they defeated the whole army thousands hundred and twenty thousands of people were defeated by 300 useless fellows because because god has chosen them praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters don't look at your past your past may be very bad your past may be shameful thing we can't even tell anyone don't even look at your present because you are incapable of standing you are so afraid you are hiding in this small wine press you are incapable of doing anything but god looks at your future which you cannot even look you don't know your future but knows god knows god knows every detail let us read book of job chapter 28 verse 24 book of job chapter 28 wait 24 let us read for he looks to the ends of the earth god he looks to the ends of the earth and he sees everything under the heavens my dear brothers and sisters when god looks at father joseph he looks at my past he looks at my present he looks at my capacity my talents my abilities and also he looks into my future he looks he knows what he is going to make me make out of me when god looks at each and every one of you he looks into your future he looks to the ends of the earth so just listen to him nobody knows your future only he knows therefore trust him don't trust anyone any book or any instruction from your friendships don't listen to any videos you watch in the youtube who gives you some imp important informations they are all useless for you because they don't know your future the only person who knows your future who you are going to become is our god therefore listen to him he knows praise the lord praise the lord when you are driving a car you don't know what is ahead of you how many curves how many cars or big big ones or containers going coming against you nobody knows if there is any block if there is any big hole in the road nobody knows but the one who is watching in the helicopter above you he can see everything ahead of you even after one hour after two hours what is going to happen when you try, drive your car he knows it 
therefore don't listen to the person who is in the next car don't listen to the person who is walking on the roadside but listen to the man who is directing you from above he knows your future he knows what is ahead of you for he looks to the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens proverbs 15:3 proverbs 15:3 we read like this proverbs 15:3 the word of god says very clearly god knows and understands everything and god knows every every your beginning from your beginning till the end every part of your life nothing will be hidden the eyes of the lord are in every place eyes of the lord are in every place even at dark darkness even when you close the room when you are alone in your home he knows the eyes of the lord are in every place keeping watch on the evil and the good he knows how many evil how many good every detail he knows his eyes are there everywhere praise the lord and let us also see god has told us another person very interesting fact that is first samuel first samuel chapter 17 First Samuel chapter 17 there is an incident that you all know but it's good to read and reflect once again praise the lord Goliath praise the lord there was a man a huge man Philistine champion first Samuel chapter 17 was for 17 was for we read like this and there came out from the camp of the philistines a champion named goliath a goth of goth whose height was 6 cubits and a span almost 8 feet so now next continue reading was 5 he had a helmet of bronze on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and he weighed the weight of the coat was 5000 shekels of bronze and then was 6 he had greaves of bronze on his legs and javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders the shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and his shield bearer went before him he stood and shouted at the ranks of israel why have you come out to draw up for battle am i not a philistine and are you not servants of saul choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me so there was a big announcement goliath such a huge giant man was standing there and threatening the israelites and said now you choose one man from you and i am here from here from philistines one by one come to me if anyone is able to defeat me then we surrender we surrender whole country unto you then king saul and the israelites were searching for almost equal size of people they were searching among all the israelites they could not find anyone who were almost half of the size of goliath because most of the israelites were small he stood and shouted to the ranks of israel why have you come out to draw up okay now let's read we read like this praise the lord a hallelujah a hallelujah thank you jesus praise to jesus a hallelujah we read verse 24 we read like this verse 24 all the israelites when they saw the man fled from him and were very much afraid everyone they were all frightened continue the israelites said have you seen this man who has come up surely he has come up to defy israel the king will greatly enrich the man who kills him and will give him his daughter and make his family free in israel then david was listening david a small boy was a shepherd boy with his shepherd dress with one stick in his hand and one sling in his hand and then david said to the men who stood by him what shall be done for the man who kills this philistine okay tell me who kills this man what i what is the what is the reward we are going to get a small boy 
he is asking all the soldiers who are around and discussing then continuing takes away the reproach from israel for who is this uncircumcised to philistine that he should defy the armies of the living god praise the lord you know david was so angry about one thing because this goliath was speaking bad about god the god of israel and everyone was keeping quiet david could not keep quiet because how dare he speak against my god the armies the god of the armies the living god how can he speak about my god that is why david was so angry he didn't look at his capacity he didn't look at the size of that goliath he was only looking at what why did they swear against god against the living god of israel this is what hurt david then verse 27 the people answered him in the same way so shall it be done for the man who kills him 28 was 28 when he was talking all these things to the people around his brothers his elder brothers because he's the youngest one so his elder brothers heard him asking all these unnecessary questions to the people so his elder eldest brother Eliab heard him talking to the men and Eliab anger was kindled against David he said the Eliab the eldest brother came and said why have you come down with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness you are supposed to be taking care of the sheep there in the wilderness why are you here whom did you entrust those sheep you know this is normally this is the attitude of all the eldest brothers and when the younger one comes where the elders are doing their business if the younger one comes they will chase them out they will chase him out i'm also one an eldest one so i know what i used to do so and why have you come down with whom you have you left those few sheep in the wilderness i know your presumption and the evil of your heart for you have come down just to see the battle i know why you came you have come for sightseeing you have come for this to watch this battle we are going to fight and you want to see watch this and enjoy then he turned away from him toward another and spoke in the same way then he continued asking everyone what what is this king going to give me if i'm going to kill that philistine the people answered him again as he before when the words that david spoke were heard verse 31 when the words that david spoke were heard they repeated them before saul and he sent for him then king saul said okay bring him bring that man so david thought okay there is a big huge man has come to defeat goliath and now let me see him and then saul said okay bring him then david came and saul was so disappointed to see this small creature and then david said to saul let no one's heart fail because of him your servant will go and fight with this philistine don't worry everybody wipe away your tears and be strong i am going to defeat philistine this small creature is boasting in front of king saul then saul said to david you are not able to go against this philistine to fight with him because initially when saul brought him called him saul had an expectation but the moment he saw david all his expectations failed disappeared and then saul felt so bad about this small boy and said you're not able my dear boy you're not able to go against this philistine to fight with him for you are just a boy and he has been a warrior from his youth from his childhood onwards he's a warrior you are only a small boy my dear brothers and sisters remember looking at your size and shape many will tell you you are just a boy they are all educated brilliant intelligent from their young days why do you want to waste your time people will tell you don't listen to those words listen to the inner words inner voice that you hear from inside inside somebody told david go you will be able to destroy this philistine he only listened to the inner voice the inner voice the negative voice from which you hear from everybody even from the leaders even from the king don't listen the negative things you are not able to go against this philistine my dear boy 
you are just a boy was for 34 then what did this small boy say and now he is he is boasting again another some uh, uh, some uh, infatuation or some kind of uh, imagination but david said to saul you are seven used to keep sheep for his father i am a shepherd i used to keep sheep that's the biggest thing he can speak about i used to keep sheep and whenever a lion or a bear come i took a lamb from the flock and and took a lamb from the flock continue was 34 5 i went after it and struck it down and rescued the lamb from its mouth and if it turned against me i would catch it by the jaw strike it down and kill it praise the lord he is talking about killing lion as if he is killing a small lizard and then verse 36 continue reading your servant has killed both lions and bears and this uncircumcised to philistine shall be like one of them since he has defied the armies of the living god so this is why he is so angry because he spoke against god my dear brothers and sisters he doesn't know anything the outcome of this war he doesn't care about what every other factors he is only worried about one factor why who is he to speak against my god how dare he speak against my god that's all this david is worried about and now verse 37 david said the lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear okay continue verse 38 was 38 saul clothed david with his armor so saul gave his armor the huge armor he is put on a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail and almost similar to the uh, you know the goliath was 39 david strapped saul's sword over the armor and that he tried in vain to walk he tried to walk but he could not make one step further because of the heavy metals and weapons that he was carrying and he said i am not used to all these i'm not used to this sword this shield this helmet this breastplate and these shoes and all this i'm not used to all these please forgive me and then david removed everything was putty then he took his staff in his hand one stick and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch and then he took one sling was in his hand and he drew near to the philistine continue verse 41 the philistine came on and drew near to david with his shield bearer in front of him there are two people one person is carrying his shield huge shield so he needed one person to carry because he's so huge verse 42 when the philistine looked and saw david he disdained him for he was only a youth ruddy and handsome in appearance okay he's good looking but he's a small boy and philistine was so feeling so ashamed to even stand in front of him and 43 was 43 the philistine said to david am i a dog that you come to me with small sticks because this boy has come with a stick and that is the only weapon he has when the philistine with all the big mighty weapons when he looked down at this small boy who comes with a small stick so philistine got offended because He said am I a dog that you come to me with a stick and the Philistine cursed David by his gods he used the name of his gods and he cursed David because Philistine felt so ashamed to stand even in front of this small creature who comes with a small stick to beat him then verse 44 then the Philistine said to David come to me and i will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the wild animals of the field he was trying to th- frighten him with some uh, uh, some uh, fearful words and then was 45 but david said to the philistine you come to me with sword and spear and javelin but i come to you in the name of the lord of host the god of the armies of israel whom you have defied you know David knew the moment he has defied the name of God his protection is gone the Goliath protection is gone since he has spoken against the army the lord of the army he lost his protection that was the strength of David therefore David knew since he has defied the name of God his protection is gone now it is easy for me to defeat this army 
Praise the Lord. And verse 46. This very day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the head body, the dead bodies, Philistines and uh, Philistines army this very day to the birds of the air. Continue. And to the wild animals of the earth. He says the same words. Okay, verse 47. And that all his assembly. Okay, verse 48. When the Philistine drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. De the Goliath came closer, closer and David ran quickly in front of the army, in front of all the Israelites the army. And this small creature is standing in front of the huge human being called Goliath. And then can see 49. David put his hand in his back took out one stone, five stones are there, but took one stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead. It went inside and he fell face on the ground. Even the Philistine, such a huge man, he could not even take one step or one sword, at least one smash. But before that, this mighty giant just fell down and David need not have used you could need not use the whole five stones, only one stone, one single stone. The, such a huge giant came down, mighty brothers and sisters, and everybody praised God. Mighty brothers and sisters, God wants to use all the weak ones. And he continued reading verse 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and stone, striking down the Philistine and killing him. There was no sword. David's hand, he did not have a sword. So what did he do? He went, verse 40, 51. He went, verse 51. He went, then David ran and stood over the Philistine. He grasped his sword, drew it out of his sheath and killed him and he cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. My dear brothers and sisters, the Philistine came depending on the power of his sword and his weapons. But David came depending on the living God of Israel. And now, what was the dependency of the Goliath? That became the reason for him to die. With the same sword, he was chopped off. And he trusted in God. David trusted in God. God made him victorious. My dear brothers and sisters, today the message for all of you is this. If anybody is worried about your capacity, talents, ability and you are complaining to God, God wants to tell you, keep quiet. Don't complain. If you think you are useless, good for nothing, you are incapable, then you do need to do only one thing. Trust in me completely. Depend on me completely. Total surrender. Total trust. I am going to use you. I am going to lead you. I am going to lift you up. You will see how I am going to lead you. Because you see your past. But I see your future. You mighty warrior. Let us close our eyes.